Screen Brain, how it pulls you and pushes you back into the screen. Let's break down screen addiction. I'm Dr. Trish Lee. In this video, I want to talk about what I'm calling Screen Brain. And Screen Brain is the brain pattern that makes it so that you want to use the screen more and more. And obviously it's created by the screen and perpetuated by the screen. We'll break it down. Number two, I wanna share with you what's happening in your brain when you consume the screen too much so that it throws your brain into brain draining mode. And lastly, I wanna share with you number three, a brain hack so you can start balancing the screen in your life. All right, let's dig in. Screen brain, what am I talking about? I think this classification of screen brain kind of covers all um, uses of the screen on the continuum of using the screen uh, too much for work or just full blown being drawn back into screen use over and over, which can include social media, it can include just wormholing and falling down funnels of videos, it can include looking at your phone over and over to see if somebody's texted you or if somebody's emailed or just checking consistently and constantly for that little dopamine hit of there's a notification or there's a new video, there's a new thing on my feed. It is so bad for your brain that I've been inspired to basically dedicate a large percentage of this channel to talking about screen brain. What happens is when you go into the screen, it's giving you this hit of not only stimulation, but also it's giving you a calming effect through dopamine. And the author of Dopamine Nation talks about this in her book, and I've had her on my podcast before, talking about this constant pleasure-seeking mode in the brain. Dopamine's a pleasure-seeking neurotransmitter. It's insatiable, it keeps you coming back for more. So when you go to the screen, it makes you feel good for a little while while you're in it. And especially if you're scrolling quickly and you're hearting and you're liking, it can make it so that, wow, you're feeling great. You're getting tons of stimulation and it's giving you dopamine that makes you feel calm. So it's kind of wiring your brain, but relaxing it too. Now, after you use the screen for any amount of time, especially the more time you use it, you're actually fatiguing your brain. So it's becoming wired and tired. And now what happens is you're using a lot of that extra fast brain speed mode called high beta. It will give you more anxiety. At the same time, you're tiring and overwhelming your brain. It will make you feel tired, cranky, irritable, your theta, the slow speed goes up. So now you're feeling anxious and overwhelmed and tired. Not the place for your optimal brain to be, not the place for productivity, not the place for calm focus. Calm focus is out of that extreme in the middle using alpha and low beta. It's the sweet spot, the zone. So basically, if you go into the screen, you're creating screen brain that's pulling you out of the zone. So if you say to yourself, I feel anxious, I feel tired and depressed, I feel low motivation, I don't feel like I can get through my work. Screen brain does that to you. It makes it difficult to use executive function skills like planning and organization. Your brain's been trained inadvertently to get quick, fast hits of dopamine instead of having to put an hour's worth of work in to get a little bit of dopamine. Now, with a scroll and a like and a heart, you get dopamine with no effort. So now it's time to put effort in and your brain doesn't want to do it. That's how neuroplasticity works. It can be your best friend if you want it to, but it can be your worst enemy if you're in the screen all the time. So that was number two. I always forget to, to announce number two. I always transition into it, whatever. So number three is your brain hack. Think about this and realize the more you use the screen, the more you're pulling your brain into these extremes out here. Too fast, too slow, overwhelmed, screen brain, anxious, depressed, low motivation. When you stay out of the screen longer and longer, your brain's gonna start slowly moving back into this mode. 
you also can purchase the Muse headband that I always share about on my videos because what it does is it trains your brain into this optimal mode and it does a lot of the work for you. And I'll make sure we put the link below so that you can get the 15% off discount with the exclusive link um, for people in my community to be able to use to get 15% off. And it shows up in the checkout, so look for it there. But when you use that, it's pulling your brain. Then when you make new action steps and you stay out of the screen, and instead you go into your life to get dopamine for pleasure, serotonin for happiness, and oxytocin for connection, that is when you're really making the important changes. So brain hack number two is create a balanced schedule so that you are out of the screen at least double than you're in the screen and really watch how much you're being drawn back to screen use because that's a call well, it can become addictive, but it's also a call for mood regulation. It means it's time to take a break and go do something healthy in the world to bring your brain down for a bit. So uh, my son, Declan, got a new job and he's funny because you know how that goes with your own kids. He was telling me that at his new job, once an hour, they make them get up from their desks and do some kind of workout. And he thinks it's for his body. He was telling me this last night. He's like, you know, two days ago, we had to do push-ups between every hour. You know, it's an eight-hour day. So he's doing uh, whatever, eight sets of whatever number of push-ups. So his arms are feeling really good. Then he had to do squats. I said, your bosses, I love this. That is a brain break. That's not a body break. And he's like, that's a body break. We're getting big. I'm like, that's a brain break too, my brother. Because what research shows is, for optimal productivity, you take a break at least every hour and 15 minutes. So every hour they're opening their, their workers focus, coming out of the screen, opening the closed focus, making it open, moving blood through the system, moving the electrical energy around their body and decreasing that buildup of stress and fatigue in the brain. Absolutely brilliant. And that's what I encourage you to do. Look at your schedule and get brain breaks built in that don't include the screen, especially if you use the screen consistently for your work. Okay, I hope that helps you stay out of screen brain, recognizing the more you're out of the screen, the healthier your brain's going to be. Balance it, get healthy mood regulation built into your schedule, and you will thank yourself forever for doing it. Uh, because remember, if you get into the screen, it's going to control your brain. You'll no longer be in control, which is why I always say control your brain or it'll control you.